All right, so I'm here with Jan, uh, Jan Trzewski. Yeah, right. Hi, are you? Hello, <laughs> and it's very nice to be here in Germany at Hamrede Friedrichshafen. Thank you. Where um, we, we're talking about Hamnet. Right. And so since I joined ARDC, I learned a lot about Hamnet. So, but let's start with you. Um, congratulations on your award. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was As, a great surprise. <laughs> yes, but it's, I, I believe this is the kind of technical innovation we need in amateur radio. Yeah, thanks. So tell us how you got involved into Hamnet. Yeah, I was uh, starting with uh, my amateur radio career in 1997, which mm -hmm. is quite long ago now. And I was That's in the, the same age year I got involved, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, yes. So in the age of 17, I was uh, starting amateur radio and I got very quickly interested in automatic stations. So we, we had a small peering group where we talked to each other and um, we started, hey, let's have an own repeater. We programmed our voice mailbox system. and. Um, it was quite quite fun there, and I started to realize, okay, this is really something you can you can really do everything what you want uh, on the amateur radio bands, and, and I started to explore about digital communications, and um, I really like to visualize all these map things. So in the former history, we had this similar setup with the packet radio system, which was crossing whole Europe. So I was able from my home. To, uh, to connect to Spain, for example, just by radio. There wasn't, was not real internet there, right. at least not for the end users. And that's just how it all started. It was so slow that they can read everything if you, if you read packet radio. Yeah? And then we started to play, what can you do with packet radio? And uh, it, it discovered that you can transport TCP IP on packet radio. And this is how I learned uh, all the layers uh, to learn the TCP stack, the IP stack, and learn how to manually write an email on SMTP. Oh, uh, right, of course. <laughs> so it took, it took a while. In 2009, um, the packet radio almost died. Um, so the link uh, uh, network was not there anymore, but we were looking for a replacement because we really like to interconnect all of our auto uh, uh, automatic stations. So uh, what we did is um, we we've had now the uh, um, regulations uh, was uh, saying that we can only have 10 megahertz bandwidth uh, on the 5 gigahertz band. And we, there were no, no devices there that can handle 10 megahertz. After a while, they came up, uh, some commercial products came up with 10 megahertz bandwidth. So we were able to set up some, some links and I said, hey, why do you... Most of the people just wanted to, to connect their repeaters uh, to the internet. And I said, hey, why? We have a worldwide coordinated IP space. Why right. don't we use that? And we started to deploy uh, in different regions um, using that unique IP space uh, with, with our um, yeah, radio links. And uh, over the time, we bridged all the, the gaps in between and we created this large RF-based network now, just with the thanks of this unique IP space. Uh, and um, uh, only 15 years later, <laughs> right. we have now this this map here with all the interconnections uh, by radio. And all these are like repeater owners and... No, these are real automatic stations and re yeah, the repeater's owner, of course, don't live at the repeater side. Right, right. So they, <laughs> but they have the space up on the hills. Exactly, right, right. On the mountains. And okay. you see our problems like, yeah, the gap to Berlin and so on. And uh, we are really fighting hard to get the right sets uh, <laughs> to, to get it uh, connected uh, to, uh, to the rest of the network. Okay. And of course we want to expand in all directions and... Uh, right. You're going to yeah. expand down to like, I guess, I don't... Prague. To Prague, and yeah, and to Dresden. The eastern part of, Euro, uh, of Germany is yeah. it's not, not that easy. Right. But we, we can expand and thanks to, to the uh, really good hardware we were able to buy from uh, the ADC grant, we have now very stable links. Uh, and can really go fast. If you, for example, if you, what what I really like is, I, I I don't think what you can really do with that uh, network. I'm more interested in yeah, there's a network and we can and it's own created. We don't uh, um, need to find the way how to use it because we can say hey look, we have now a backbone network. Please use it right. however you want. I mean, it's TCP/IP based, so you you can, can can do that. What I really like and many of the people setting up these repeater systems. So what I really like uh, in this network is to have a trace route, for example, from Vienna down here in Austria to the north coast uh, in the Netherlands. And this is all by, by RF. Mm. And if you do the trace route in my computer, 
and see uh, that um, this is only by 200 milliseconds or even less, this has really amazed me. And we have some some uh, functionalities on this map, so you can uh, can make it even a graphical scene which path is chosen. Wow. Uh, I want to really have see some applications using that network mm. where you can um, sit there and say, hey, look, I'm in Hamburg. I want to, to, to talk to a guy in Munich. And on the other hand, I have a, a, a display where I can see the routes where my packets are passing through the network. That would, would be amazing. And this is how we are going to start with to talk with uh, the government about emergency uh, services. Uh, if, if something's breaking, and uh, this is all coming from uh, the flooding in the so-called Ahrtal just yeah. la last year or two years ago. And uh, so there's a lot of activity now um, to get support from the local government in order to make make this uh, network even more uh, hardened, okay. hardened, robust, exactly.